So anyway, we had this 24000 and we started the business, and that's how we got going. And we ran along for for the first three years, and we made money, and we did well, and everything was good. And what happens to most entrepreneurs like me, we get cocky, right? And we get to thinking we're really God's gift to management, God's gift to doing everything. I am so good. <clears throat> well, I, uh, I had my comeuppance a couple of times, and... Um, I bought a magazine, lost a million dollars in that magazine. A million dollars back when that was a lot of money. And um, I, uh, we started some other ventures that didn't make it. And so, hmm. I mean, it so was a, a lot of learning. Obviously, oh, it wasn't just you got $24,000 and then you just blew it out of the water. No, we, we'd go along and we'd do really well. And then we'd go along and then, oh, it was awful. But... But we made a lot of great decisions. Now, I mean, along yeah. the way, one of the things we did, I think, which which is was good, is in in retrospect, was we were the first landline-free network in America. Now, what's that? What what does that mean? You ask. Well, back in those days, we sent our broadcasts to the local radio stations all over Mid America by telephone lines. Really? Yeah. Now, it wasn't like you went in and dialed up a phone mm -hmm. line, but they were what they called full-time, full circuit. So they were up all the time. And we would we would uh, lease these lines from AT&T. And so that's how we ran our operation. Well, it was very expensive. I mean, really expensive to lease these lines 24-7. So in, 80, in, in, in 70, 78, we went satellite. And we tore down all of our lines and... Um, we were fully satellite, so we owned our own system. So that was that was a major change in how we ran our business and a cost savings. We hmm. saved a lot of money. That's 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 really interesting. You found this dynamic in the obviously as you as you grow your company, you build it, you see these dynamics in your expenses and you have to obviously pivot as necessary to ensure that you have you are making some revenue. And you know, I think the young people that are listening to your broadcast today um you know i think the they'll be successful if they're really passionate about <laughs> what what they're into what they're doing it won't end up being like what they think it's going to be when they're at the front end i mean i thought i was going to feed uh news programs to a few radio stations and and it was so much different than than that it was initially a farm network and we carried farm programs to radio stations and then we evolved into news and then we uh, began to get in sports and we kind of backed into the sports business I said at the outset here that I was not a sports guy I am the biggest <laughs> nerd in the world still and I don't know much about sports and I am I'm not now I'm retired but I ran one of the nation's largest sports broadcasting entities and Learfield today is the largest in that space by far and isn't it interesting and, and that it was started by a nerd who doesn't know <laughs> diddly about sports and, and 